welcome back to my channel. I've been locked up in hotel room for already 10 days. I start to feel not myself, uh, but I'm not going out because there's a police car right at the front of the hotel. Oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm doing a 14 day mandatory quarantine in the hotel room in Tianjin because it's so quiet and lonely and really, 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 really silent. I run out of any ideas for any kind of you know, new videos and new articles. So forgive me if I haven't been updating, although I had all the time in the world to actually create something. So really writer's block is real. But yesterday everything changed. I'm super happy. I feel like my creative juice is flowing again, thanks to the water. And I'll tell you this little story. My water is running low. I was gonna drink some tap water, but if I'm not used to the component, the composition of the tap water, I might get sick. I might have a runny stomach. Then they might think I have COVID because upset and runny stomach is a part of the symptom of COVID. And I don't wanna cause any kind of unnecessary attention to myself. So I decided to order some bottled water, although it's not super ecologic not ecologic at all, but special time, special measures. So I opened the box and I was shocked because on the bottle, the brand written black over white, it says chilled tap water. Liang Bai Kai, if you read Chinese, literally it means that. And I was really shocked. I don't know what on earth a company would call their water tap water. Like why? So I called up my mom asking her if she knows this brand and she told me, yeah, it's a new brand, very trending. They have a very special marketing and it's authentic. And I was like, wait a second, authentic. I'm not gonna drink authentic tap water because I might get a runny stomach that is not good right now. I mean, quarantine, like, please. So I decided to check on the national database for trademark and design. So in China, if a trademark is, uh, let's say, has bad quality or is associated with uh, bad practices, then they would delete the trademark from their database and uh, basically eject the whole case and erase everything. And the, the company is not able to use it as a registered trademark anymore because of the protection for the consumers and for the market in general. Maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not. In other countries, I haven't seen any other country who have done that. I'm just saying that this is a, a Chinese thing. So I checked and there is a registration, yeah, under the company Mingluen, which is the company uh, on the bottle. So I knew it's safe. I drink one whole bottle. I feel hydrated, I feel good. So I know that it's safe. I actually like the taste as well. So from this whole funny case of uh, tap water as mineral water, bottled water, I would like to make a video on registering your art brand because creative people tend to have really hilarious, unique names for their art businesses and for their art brands. You know, not every company have names like Salesforce, like so normal, so descriptive, so business. Um, artists have like crazy names. And maybe one day you realize a name that you have been cultivating for 10 years is not possible to be registered as a registered trademark. And you might feel very upset. So just to prevent all of that, I would like to let you know all of the fundamentals. I'm not a practitioner, I'm not a lawyer, but I have worked in the domain of IPR for three years in Europe. So hopefully I can explain to you with non-legal language. And if I can understand, uh, I think you'll be able to understand as well. Now, the first thing first, you should avoid any generic terms, such as naming the apple, apple. But you can name a computer apple, or you can name apple computer, um, if that makes sense. But it's kind of odd, but don't name apple computer, but just saying that you cannot use generic descriptive things because if you are able to register that, then other people are not able to. That's not fair for others. It's because they were born too late, they cannot use their native language, their common language, then you might ask me, wait a second, why this bottled water is able to name itself tap water? That's okay. Like why is able to register? I think because of several reasons. The first reason being Liang Bai Kai, the three letters does not contain Quang Quan Shui, which is mineral water or Shui, water. So it's a dialect. It's another way to call something. It's not the most common way to call something. Um, I'll give you an example in art. For example, you are a urban artist, you make uh, graffiti, you wanna make a brand, and you wanna call it urban graffiti. Maybe that's not okay because it's a descriptive term, but if you say 
tax, urban tax, because tax means graffiti, means, uh, you know, lettering art, but then it's not so generic and descriptive to the art, although sometimes it is, but it's not that descriptive. I think also depending on the country, the region, the examiner, the particular person who handled your case. For example, if I were to examine this Liang Bai Kai, I would not have approved this case because imagine the consumers would be so confused to drink this water. Like, it's just not worth the risks of all this confusion and trouble and, you know, the whole thing. I would not have approved it, but it was approved, so, you know, you never know. So you can try, but likely if you use very descriptive terms like apple for apple, computer for computer, you are not able to get it registered. The second tip I would like to share with you is that if you don't protect your trademark, it can become generic. Therefore, you will lose your trademark because generic terms cannot be registered as trademarks. For example, if you go, ah, true, you say, clinics, pass me clinics. Or if you get a headache and you say, oh, I need some aspirin. You know, those kind of um, popular brands, popular trademarks are becoming generic and the companies, the trademark owners, spend millions and millions every year to try to defend uh, their trademarks to uh, not to lose it, which is fair enough, I guess. It's like kind of a dilemma to have a very popular products or very popular brands. As an artist, if you have a brand that becomes very popular, you also need to keep in mind to defend it whenever possible so it doesn't become generic. Now, the third thing is uh, you will either have to use it or you will lose it. What I mean is, Imagine you created 10 different uh, trademarks because you are thinking about um, taking over the world and make different kind of things. You wanna have a graffiti line or abstract line and you made a lot of trademarks. But if you don't use it, the next renewal, because it's not forever, okay, is a renewed uh, maybe every five years, 10 years, depending on your country, depending on uh, you know how many times you have renewed before. So when you renew it, they need to see you have used it. If you don't use it, they will uh, not let you renew it because a lot of companies like Coca-Cola, like uh, big companies like Nestle, they register hundreds of trademarks across different categories and classifications to prevent other people from using uh, or let's say free writing or infringing their copyright, right? So they try to protect themselves, but if they don't use it, it prevents other honest people from using this term, this trademark. So that's why every few years when they are getting renewed, they are invalidated and then they have to apply again, which is possible, but between the time, there is a window of opportunity for you to take that trademark. Number four, if your name or your artist name is uh, very difficult to be registered, let's say if it's generic or if it's clashing with one of the famous uh, brands or famous artist names and you cannot register it, it's safe to use initials. I would actually recommend you to use initials as your first alternative. For example, there is an artist called the most famous artists. In China, for sure, you will not in a million years to register this brand because in China, you cannot use the best, the most. Um, like imagine you have a computer, you cannot call it the fastest computer because it's not fair for the, uh, the maker of the computer who make the fastest. And if you don't make the fastest, it's uh, false. It's false information. Therefore, you cannot call yourself for example, the most famous artist. In other countries, I'm not very sure, depending on your country, likely you cannot, um, because <laughs> come on, the most famous artist, it's, you're not the most famous artist anyway, um, in this case of this particular artist, so you cannot register as the most famous artist, but you can register as T M F A or T M F artist, so that you're using, let's say, initials to abstract to subtract the information for people who love your works. They see this, they know it's you. For those of you who don't know you, they're not offended uh, by the fact you call yourself the most famous artist anyway. So it's a really good idea to try exploring using initials as a um, text-based trademark. 
Last but not the least, if you cannot register your initials because your initial clash with another famous brand like IBM, right? Like uh, uh, GE, uh, GM, like you cannot use those names. So what can you do? You can create a logo. You can use graphic content as your trademark because you can register trademark as text as image or a combination of text and image. The most famous one would be, I think, uh, Nike, the swoosh, or Adidas, right? Uh, like this is uh, Tommy Hilfiger. It's, if you see this, you know it's Tommy Hilfiger. If you see this, you know it's those brands. You don't need to see the text. Of course, you can combine with the text, with the typography of your choice, but you don't have to. Text is not the only way you can register a trademark. You can use many other things. You can even use music if you are interested in exploring this as well. Uh, but if you're a music artist, of course, if you're a visual artist, try to explore the opportunities. Uh, don't change your name. After years of years of cultivating your brand and having this brand identity, you're not gonna change your artist's name just because you couldn't register. Like, it would be such a pity. That's why I want you to know all the options and if you haven't had a artist name yet, to avoid generic terms that could potentially cause you any trouble. All right, that's all for today. Five fundamental tips on creating uh, your trademark. Of course, you don't have to register your trademark. You can simply use it and nobody is going to stop you um, to use certain names or certain words, um, but also check the domain a name or domain address because that's not bundled with the trademark. That doesn't mean that you automatically have that. It's first come, first served. So you also have to explore this as well to see if everything will fit together into one piece. All right, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and um, counting down four days to the end of the quarantine. Thank you and see you in the next video.